Hello everyone, my name is Pixelriffs and welcome back to the Minecraft Survival Guide. I hope you guys are having a great day. Today we're starting off outside this building that I've been working on in Founders Forge, which now has significantly more of a roof than it had last time. And believe me, this looks super complicated and it was. It was very complicated to make, but I'm pretty happy with it so far. It's got, it's got more walls than it had when you last saw it. We've actually re replicated this wall, basically exactly carbon copied from the opposite side. Uh, it needs, oh no, it does have windows. The windows are just incredibly transparent glass that apparently I missed. And around here, we have a reproduction of the other side as well. It doesn't really have much of a roof on it right now. I'm working on that a little bit. But what I've decided to do is something a little bit different here. This building is actually going to be kind of like a giant C shape or a U shape, I suppose, where this is actually gonna be a kind of courtyard area that you can walk into, and there are going to be doors around each of the sides leading to various different offices. This place is gonna be kind of compartmentalized a little bit. That bit over there is actually going to be the main entrance, and there's gonna be kind of a reception desk here, because what I want for this is to kind of Imagining the lore of the world here, for this to be kind of like a tool smith or maybe like a tool agency or a weapon sort of supplier or something like that. The kind of place where there's like a blacksmith working and there are people sort of working with metals and distributing tools so that people can go and mine resources from the ravine. That's going to be the idea is that all of the industry around this town centers around this giant ravine and the ever evidently like this big company in the middle with this big kind of office building type of thing, a medieval office building, a fantasy office building, is uh, kind of distributing the tools to the people who want to go down here and prospect for whatever ores happen to be down there. That's that's the idea behind this thing, at least. So yeah, what I kind of want to do is have like a tradesman's entrance and like a deliveries kind of section back here. We could maybe even put a cart just outside that's about to go and deliver some tools to some folks or something like that. But industry is very much going to be what rules this place. And so the people making the tools are going to have a lot of money. They're going to be rolling in the profit. So I decided I would probably do a little bit more of this building this week. And it's taking a while because obviously it's quite a, a large construction. This is almost like town hall sort of scale compared to this kind of stuff that I normally build. And I have a lot of resources in my inventory, which I'm actually going to put away in here for the time being, if I can find a spare bit in this chest. There we go, we'll just dump everything in here. You'll notice I've got a few more sort of shulker boxes and stuff around. I went to the end and got myself a whole bunch, including some that are now very, very brightly color-coded in my ender chest. And I haven't got a huge amount of stuff in each of these quite yet, but this one's going to be for ender pearls specifically. I think the red one is going to be for redstone, that kind of thing. We'll figure out what the other ones are as we go. But today's project is going to be something a little different. It's going to be a little bit of fun, especially considering that I spent most of yesterday's episode just talking about Optifine, right? We may as well do something a little bit different. And so for this, I'm going to keep these pistons on me. I'm going to keep a few blocks on me because we're going to do something a little bit fun. We are going to catch ourselves some creepers and skeletons today, and we're going to make a music disc farm. Music discs are something I haven't really touched on in the series before. They're a fun way of introducing music to the game that isn't just the in-game music that naturally plays, which I normally play with turned off. And you might think, what, there's music in the background when you start each episode? Yeah, that's because I put that in in the edit. I tend to play with music off most of the time, so I can like listen out for stuff happening in my house, or I can listen to music or watch you know, Netflix or something while I'm playing Minecraft, if I'm doing some grind work, listen to a podcast or something like that. But occasionally it might be nice to play some different tunes. Now, the thing about Minecraft soundtrack is that it only really plays three or four different tunes when you're playing in survival. So it can be a fun idea to expand that by getting your hands on some music discs. And for that, I'm going to keep the pistons that I've got in my inventory. I'm going to keep a few blocks of cobblestone and wood and stuff on me. I'm going to keep this gunpowder that I've collected from around here because, yep, the creepers have been spawning at night while I've been working up there on the house and I've occasionally needed to make some more fireworks so I'm gathering gunpowder where I can but we will need ourselves a few slime balls from here let's take enough to make eight sticky pistons and we'll keep one piston there just for the sake of it and yeah that is pretty much all we will need oh got to make those in the shape the right shape for the crafting recipe and I think that's everything we will need for this give or take a couple of redstone components so while we wait for the sun to go down let's take a look at the music discs that we've already managed to gather from dungeon loot we have two music discs here, we have 13 and we have Cat, and these are the only two that you will be able to find in dungeon chests. So the rest of the music discs in the game you'll have to acquire a completely different way, and it's quite a fun one, which is why I wanted to spend an episode
episode doing it today. But let's talk about how you can actually play these music discs in the first place. And for that, we all need, need to break into our little secret stash of diamond ore that I've got in this chest over here. Of course, the bulk of my diamonds are over there in the storage system, but occasionally I take, tend to bring these supplies back to the farmhouse. Looks like we only got one diamond out of that, despite the Fortune 3 pickaxe, but that's not a problem. We can break down some wood if I've got some in here. All of the wood I have right now... Okay, let's bring some birch planks. All of the wood I have is turned into these wood logs, which uh, have bark on all six sides and still only give you four wood, despite the fact that you've already put four logs in there in order to get three of those. It's it's not a great exchange, but here we go anyway. To make a jukebox, what you need to do is basically make the same recipe as a note block, but instead of redstone in the middle here, you add a diamond, and that gets you a jukebox, which looks, for all intents and purposes, like a note block, and can actually be kind of camouflaged among note blocks, but the diamond in there adds this little slot to the top where you can insert some music discs. And the volume for these is controlled separately to the in-game music. You can actually find it in here under the jukebox and note blocks volume. So let's turn that down a little bit so I can hear myself think. <laughs> and then your volume for this is actually kind of going to depend on your proximity to it. So you can, it, it's directional as well. So you can kind of walk away from it a little ways and still hear it, but it kind of plays faintly in the distance once you get a little further away. If I walk out here onto the farm, for example, There you go. When I'm all the way out here, it isn't playing quite as clearly. It's still very much there, and it's got a decent radius, but once I start walking down into the mine, it fades away, and when I start to walk out again, you can faintly hear it in the distance, which is quite a cool effect, I think. And apparently the zombies have turned up at my house to have a rave. All right, fellas, sorry. <laughs> you're wearing shoes, but you're not getting in. That's quite enough of that loud music, and the other disc is perhaps not as nice to listen to as Cat, because if you play 13, it's got this very kind of creepy ambient vibe to it. It's, oh, yeah, there you go. It's <laughs> it's a little bit a little bit more sinister sounding, so I don't enjoy playing that one as often. But those are the two that you get from Dungeon Chest, so chances are, if you've done a little bit of exploring in your world, you will have found some of these already. Now, the way you get all of the others is really quite fun. Because believe it or not, there are 10 more music discs and you get them from these guys. Although they are not the kind of thing that you can get from a simple player kill on a creeper. You will still just get gunpowder from creepers anytime you fight them yourself. The trick to getting music discs out of creepers is to have a skeleton kill them with a bow and arrow, which is easier said than done, believe me, because most of the time if a skeleton attacks a creeper, the creeper will become hostile to the skeleton if it's not already hostile to you, and walk over and try and blow it up. Not only that, but it is quite difficult to get a skeleton to hit a creeper with a bow and arrow in the first place. The skeleton's arrow trajectory is not completely straight, so even if you're standing in a straight line, there's a chance that they will completely miss a creeper if it's standing between you and a skeleton. Not only that, but skeletons don't do a huge amount of damage two creepers in the first place, so it's usually best if you either weaken the creeper or put it in a position where it gets shot repeatedly by the skeleton until it dies. They don't have to shoot the creeper for the entirety of its health, they just have to get a single shot on it that kills the creeper in the end. Now let's see if we can take out this creeper using that skeleton there. It's got an enchanted bow, so chances are it will do a fair bit of damage. So we've got to weaken the creeper a little bit by hitting it and moving away, and then we've got to try and... Yeah, there we go, we got one shot on the creeper. Try that again, Mr. Skeleton. Oh no, he's just shot a zombie. Oh well. <laughs> and now the zombie's attacking him. Let's see if we can take care of that for him. All right, taking a bit of a breather and dealing with some of the other hostile mobs in the area. First, let's see if we can get this skeleton back on this creeper. The creeper has sort of lost interest because I walked too far away, but here we go. The skeleton's shooting in the right direction. At least let's see if we can circle around and get him to take out this creeper for us. Go on, take the shot, take the shot. <laughs> I'm running around trying not to take any damage here. Maybe that skeleton over there is going to help us out. He doesn't have an enchanted bow, but he's right close to that creeper. Oh no, he just walked around him. Fine. And you can see how difficult this is, which explains why I don't have a huge collection of music discs already. It is very, very difficult to get a, a skeleton to time the shot so that it hits the creeper instead of you. We've also got to take into account the fact that you have to do this at night under normal conditions because the skeleton is going to burn up during the day. So all in all, that makes this a fairly difficult task. You can try and manipulate things slightly if you take advantage of the fact that skeletons like to stay a certain distance from the player, but that also 
means that you have to get quite close to the creeper. There we go. We nailed it in the end. <laughs> that took a lot of bobbing and weaving. We've been here for most of the night, in fact, but we finally got ourselves a creeper. And you'll notice that time it dropped a different looking music disc. It's got a green label and it is called Ward. Now let's go back to the house and throw this one in the jukebox. And then we'll look at a way that we can do this a little bit more efficiently and with a little bit less random running around. As you can see, I've taken a couple of arrows to some fairly unfortunate places. So that is that is the kind of thing we want to avoid when we're making a farm for music discs. But luckily, there are some pretty cool ways you can do that and it involves using pistons. We're gonna set up a very, very simple record farm during the next day. And then hopefully by the time it's night, we will have built it and we'll be able to harvest some more music discs. But let's have a listen to this one. Bit creepy, isn't it? <laughs> All right, we'll take that one out for the moment. You can listen to the full tracks online as well, and the whole Minecraft soundtrack is actually available for download from C418's Bandcamp page, so give that man your money. He makes incredible soundtracks. Now, let's head back out to the industrial area because that is a nice dark area most of the time. It is not super well lit up, and that's ideal spawning environment for our creepers and skeletons because you always need a skeleton and a creeper to do this, so that seems like the perfect environment to be carrying out this particular experiment. One other thing I'm going to grab before we go and make this contraption is a name tag because we kind of want to keep a skeleton trapped here for as long as we possibly can if we want to make this farm a more permanent thing and farm a whole bunch of music discs. So I'm going to name this one Mr. Bone Jangles. While we're here, let's also grab a block of stained glass because that will be kind of useful and maybe another sticky piston will be required for this after all. Now let's grab this lever and a little bit of redstone. Fantastic. That should be all we need. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to create a little record farm over here, and it's going to be a very, very basic design at first. There are lots of ways that you can improve upon this later, but I'm going to show you the basic one that just l involves luring a creeper and a skeleton into a place where they're going to be trapped in a block, and they're not going to be able to move so that you can basically wrangle it so that the skeleton will shoot the creeper without any real fuss. So you need to put two sticky pistons, two blocks down like so. We need to put a redstone dust there and we need to put a block on top of that. Let's use one of these dark oak wood there and then let's add a pressure plate there on top of that. So that anytime you step on this pressure plate, it's gonna activate all of those pistons at once. So what you wanna do is put the cobblestone around the outside like that. So basically whenever something steps on this pressure plate, all of the cobblestone is going to react and pop up around it, like so. And the idea is that whenever a creeper sort of walks into this, if it walks in from the side, it's actually going to end up on the pressure plate directly. Now above this, we're going to make a platform two blocks up, like so. We're going to make this a three by three kind of area. And either a skeleton or a creeper can go into this trap. But basically that means that they don't get pushed up by the pistons. And once they're in here, they can't get out. And neither can you as a player. So probably best if you <laughs> walk off of that temporarily. We're going to build exactly the same thing over here with a few blocks in between, kind of connecting these two roof spaces that we want to make, like so. And I think that will do. We'll probably just make that a three by three again, just to be sure. Gonna dig this plus shape, pop our pistons in, make sure that those are all wired up together with the redstone, put a wooden block over the top of there. And I think we'll probably put wood on top of these pistons here as well, because I've run out of cobblestone. <laughs> so I feel like that makes the most sense. So now that is another holding cell all set up for either the creeper or the skeleton. I'm not sure which is gonna be which yet, but that's kind of up to you. That, that depends which order you tend to catch them in. And I would much prefer to have a skeleton first. Now, not only is the roof preventing the skeleton or creeper from walking out of the trap a second time, it's also going to shield the skeleton from sunlight during the day, which means once we've name tagged him so he doesn't despawn, the skeleton is also never gonna burn up in the sunlight and effectively he can stay here for as long as we want him to. So assuming that we're gonna have the skeleton on this pad here, it might also help to set up a glass block above this that we can push down into the skeleton's head. That way the skeleton will not suffocate because glass blocks are a transparent block. Excuse me, I wanted the wood there, thank you. The skeleton is not gonna be suffocated by having a glass block pushed into him, but he's also not gonna be able to see or shoot anything as a result. And what we wanna have here is a piston facing down into this glass block, which I probably need to take this block out so I can take a look at that one. Yeah, piston placement is always a little bit funky. But there we go. All we need to do is run a redstone wire over to this side and we can activate it with a lead over here. So with the skeleton trapped in there, we can activate this lever. It'll push the glass block down onto him and he won't be able to shoot at us, meaning that we can 
prepare the creeper going into this cell over here. And as soon as the creeper is in place, we just come over here, we flip this lever, stand back, and stand over here behind where the creeper is going to be, and the skeleton will just shoot at us and will pretty much hit the creeper most of the time until it's dead. Now the downsides to this farm right now are that the supply of creepers and skeletons kind of has to be wrangled in here manually, so it's still going to require a little bit of running around, and it's going to require running around at night when a lot of the mobs are going to be around and trying to get at me anyway. So there's probably going to be zombies and stuff to avoid, witches and endermen and that kind of thing. But once you've got a skeleton trapped in here, remember that creepers don't burn in sunlight, so if you want to, what you can do is wait until a few mobs spawn in the area, then go to sleep to make it daytime, because then all of the undead mobs will burn up in the sunlight and all you'll be left with is a bunch of creepers, which might not be the ideal situation in most cases, but in this case is actually kind of what we want. So with the sun going down, I'm going to get ready to catch myself a skeleton and a creeper, hopefully in that order. We've got the name tag on us, I've got my ender pearls here for a quick getaway. The redstone for this is all wired up, I think we should do okay here. And already I can see creepers spawning in the distance, so that's a good sign at least. Let's get a little further away from this so that some stuff is going to spawn around the capture mechanism itself. Remember that monsters won't be able to spawn within a 24 block radius of the player, so it's probably a good idea to get a few blocks away beforehand. There's another creeper down there as well. I have yet to see... Oh, there's a couple of armoured skeletons over there. They might be even better. <laughs> They'll take a little bit of extra damage. So the problem with these skeletons is going to be making sure they follow you all right, because skeletons have this new AI, I say new, it's new as of like 1.9, but they tend to try and stay a certain distance away from the player. Once again, we can try to manipulate that a little bit, so once this skeleton has gotten within a certain distance of us, we can try and force it in here like so. Let's see if he'll follow this, let's see if he'll take the bait. Of course, a bunch of creepers have spawned over here and are trying to get me now. Come on, let's see if we can push you back into the trap. Get in there! Oh, almost, almost. <laughs> try again. Give it another try, buddy. I think think you can do it. If you walk in at, a, at an, an angle, that will probably be a little bit better. There are better ways of doing this. You can always create a kind of tunnel leading them into the trap. Okay, he's ended up in that one instead. Well, we can always rewire the redstone here. That's not going to take super long at all. I was hoping you were going to go into the uh, the shiny wooden one over here, but I guess not. I guess we'll just have to move all of this. That's not a problem if I've got my silk touch pickaxe. Oh, a zombie has wandered in. Well, unfortunately, we don't get any rewards for killing zombies with a skeleton, so I guess that's going to have to do for the moment. Okay, the redstone is in place, and there we go, the skeleton is trapped and now should not be able to shoot me. Unfortunately, everything else still can, <laughs> so this is going to be a little bit tricky, and that pig over there is having a whale of a time. But look, the skeleton has now lost its aggro completely and is completely passive, so we've managed to stem the flow of arrows coming from this guy. Piggy, get off of here, mate. <laughs> I'm sorry, you're, you're clearly not meant for this. Oh, there's a creeper coming. Let's see if we can get him trapped in there. Yes, we can! Perfect! Amazing stuff. So now, if I can deal with the rest of the zombies that are around here, we should be able to get our first music disc using our new record farm. And that was a little bit of an ordeal, but I think it went pretty well, all things considered. Just gonna rejig the redstone a little bit over here. We'll put the lever a little bit further away from this creeper containment thing, just in case the creeper decides to blow up on us. But there we go, if we... There we go, yes, it's working. If we stand over here, the skeleton is going to shoot at the creeper and should occasionally score a couple of hits. Now, if we want to, <laughs> we can probably stand in a one block gap here because that's actually going to encourage the skeleton to shoot downwards. Normally skeletons aim for the head. There we go. Fantastic. We got one. Oh, and it's even a new disc. It's a brand new one. Yeah, normally skeletons aim upwards a little bit when they're shooting at you. They tend to aim for your head and that means they sometimes fire over the creeper and they end up shooting into a block above there. But there we go, folks. That actually turned out really, really well. <laughs> so we have ourselves two music discs that we didn't have at the start of this episode, which is fantastic work. Let's see if we can get a few more creepers lured in before the end of this night, shall we? It's better to do this one at a time because, uh, yeah, having two creepers following you at once when you're trying to get some precision shots on one of them is not the best idea in the world. And you can always damage the creeper a little bit as long as you don't have a sword or a bow that can completely one-shot the creeper. You can always manage to get a couple of hits on it. There we go. Get in the pen. Excellent stuff. Yeah, you can always manage to get a couple of hits up on them beforehand so that the skeleton just finishes off the creeper. Is he going to aggro on us? Yes, he is. Now let's get in the hole and wait for a couple more shots to come in. Fantastic. Take a quick look around to make sure that nothing else is going to sneak up on us right now. 
There we go. Score and disc number three. We also got a little bit of gunpowder from this, which is quite nice for me. I kind of like having a little bit of extra gunpowder around for all the fireworks I'm using. There we go, Mr. Bone Jangles. Consider yourself employed and welcome to your new home, where you'll hopefully be staying for a good long time. Now, like I said, all of the undead mobs are burning, but the creepers are still around, which means we might have a chance to get a few more of these during the day, as long as those creepers don't decide to despawn while I'm luring this fella into the trap. So we'll get at least one more. What the heck just happened? Oh no, I think he's burnt up because the piston is transparent when it's extended. Oh, that sucks. Oh well, we're gonna have to find another Mr. Bone Jangles, folks. Well, at least we at least we managed that on camera. Let's get the creeper in there at least. And sadly, I don't have another name tag for you. At the very least, we can apply a little bit of sunlight shielding to the top of this piston because yeah, I'd completely forgotten that pistons, when they're extended, are actually a transparent block, meaning that light could get through. And of course, the glass isn't gonna afford them any protection from the sunlight and that skeleton just burnt to a crisp. Oh, I'm sad now, but I think we'll be able to burn another name tag on this. We can always trade them from librarians or find the occasional extra name tag in a dungeon chest. That's not such a big deal. In the meantime, back at the house, we can have a little record party here. Let's have a listen to this one, which is Chirp. <laughs> Come on, Mendelssohn, dance with me. You don't like this song? All right, I'll take it off. And what else do we have? We have Strad. Just a little bit more peaceful and contemplative, but I like it. Which makes me think we're gonna need some sort of box here for our record collection. Um, I don't have anything to put in the green one right now, so let's use the green shulker box for our music disc collection, because this chest is gonna fill up super quickly otherwise, and I can always remove some of those if I need to. So there we go, we've got five records so far out of a possible 12. Not doing too badly so far. Another alternative to this that might even be slightly easier is to trap one of these skeletons in a boat or something like that and have him just kind of hang out there as a portable turret instead of having to mess around with this piston thing and navigating him in there every single time. So maybe we could give that a try, but I'm not certain how accurately skeletons can fire from boats, so that's going to be a slightly different experiment. All right, this guy with the gold armor is looking promising. Step on the switch. Yes, we got him. Fantastic. Oh, no, and he went off again. And he's on again, and he's off again. <laughs> Come on. Come on, dude. All right, you're stuck in that one, though. So how about we keep that guy and just re rearrange all of the redstone up here? That seems like the way to go right now. <laughs> and the other skeletons are shooting me right now and the sun is about to come up. So I really have to make sure I get this glass block in place before the skeleton is going to die. Having said that, at least this guy has a gold helmet on, which means he's not gonna start taking fire damage until that helmet breaks, which it will do eventually. But now <laughs> we should be able to trap him in there and he'll de-aggro on us. Fantastic, okay. <laughs> This has been an ordeal. This has been a lot more work than I expected it to be. But after all that, we got ourselves a gold armored skeleton who we are going to name T-Bone Walker. <laughs> and he is going to be our new record farmer. Congratulations, sir. Now, how about those creepers then? Oh, here's one. Here's one. Fantastic. Let's get this guy in here. I think we can probably lure him on. Thank goodness for creepers not despawning during the day. Thank goodness they don't burn in sunlight like the undead mobs do. Yeah, I reckon we can lure this guy on here to make it our fourth record of the episode and probably wrap things up around here. <laughs> this has taken a little bit longer than I expected it to, but yes, textbook, he is trapped in there now. And all we need to do is dig a little hole over here, activate our lever and make sure we don't stand too close to the creeper because we do not want him to explode. But hopefully the skeleton should aggro on us. Maybe if we step out of the hole and get into line of sight with him a little bit. Hey fella, I'm over here. T-Bone, talk to me, buddy. There we go, fantastic. Quick check of the corners to make sure that nothing is coming up on us. It looks like T-Bone is doing his job admirably. If only we give that man an enchanted bow, <laughs> but I think we could possibly throw him one. I'm not certain how that works with skeletons, but let's see what we get record-wise. Thank you, T-Bone. Oh, it is a new one. What do we get this time? We get blocks. How appropriate for Minecraft. All right, I'll leave this hole here so that we know that is the place we need to stand. But thank you so much for your hard work, T-Bone. Hopefully you don't burn in sunlight like Mr. Bone Jangles did. And we can head back to the, uh, <laughs> the, the farmhouse, head back to the jukebox, and this record can play us out for the episode. A nice little start to our record collection, and we're going to put this one on to play in the background. I am covered in arrows, folks, but I hope you've enjoyed today's episode. Thank you so much for watching the Minecraft Survival Guide. My name has been Pixorifs. Don't forget to leave a like on this episode if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you want to see more, and I'll see you guys soon. Take care. Bye for now.